Hi everyone. So there are different key concepts in anesthesia that appear to be a bit complicated but are actually quite basic if you stop to think about them. Uh, one such concept is the effect of changing altitude and subsequently ambient atmospheric pressure on the vapor output from the conventionally used anesthetic vaporizers. Uh, before talking about it, let's revise a few basic physical concepts. Now as we all know that the ambient atmospheric pressure at sea level is 760 millimeters of mercury. You should be familiar with the Dalton's law of partial pressure which states that in a gas mixture containing different gases, the total pressure that is exerted by the various gas mixtures is equal to the sum of the individual pressures exerted by the different gases in the mixture. And these individual pressures are called as the partial pressures. For example, in the air that we breathe, there is 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen and 1% other trace gases. We know that the total pressure at sea level is 760 millimeters of mercury. Therefore, the partial pressure that is exerted by oxygen at sea level would be 21% of 760, which is equal to around 160 millimeters of mercury. And the partial pressure for nitrogen at sea level would be 79% of 760, which is equal to around 600 millimeters of mercury. Therefore, at sea level, the partial pressure of oxygen is 160 millimeters of mercury and that for nitrogen is 600 millimeters of mercury. A very important equation that you need to keep in mind is that the partial pressure of a gas is actually equal to the product of the total pressure and the concentration of that gas. So as the total pressure decreases, for the partial pressure to remain the same, the concentration has to increase. So just remember this equation and this equation will make a lot of the concepts very, very easy to grasp. Uh, so the next um, concept that we need to talk about is when talking about the volatile nature of inhaled anesthetics, it is very important to have an understanding of the concept of saturated vapor pressure. So if we assume that the liquid volatile agent is enclosed within a container, there will be some molecules of the liquid agent that will gain enough kinetic energy and they will leave the liquid phase to enter the gaseous phase and this process is known as evaporation. Similarly, there will be some molecules in the gaseous phase that will lose enough energy and they will go back to the liquid phase. So that is known as condensation. Now there will come a point when the rate of evaporation becomes equal to the rate of condensation. And at this point of equilibrium, the pressure that is exerted on the walls of the container by the molecules of the volatile agent in the gaseous phase is known as its saturated vapor pressure or simply vapor pressure. And saturated vapor pressure is actually a function of temperature. So as the temperature increases, the saturation vapor pressure will also increase, but it remains unchanged with changes in barometric pressure. So saturated vapor pressure does not depend on the ambient atmospheric pressure. And the saturated vapor pressure can also be thought to be the volatile agent's partial pressure. So another uh, key concept that you need to be familiar with is that of the MAC or the minimum alveolar concentration. So MAC is actually the minimum concentration of the volatile anesthetic within the alveoli that produces immobility to surgical stimulation in 50% of the patients. Now MAC is usually expressed as a percentage of the total atmospheric pressure. at 
sea level. So in fact, MAC is actually representing the partial pressure of the volatile agent rather than its concentration. Uh, I will give you an example. Let us say we know that the MAC for isoflurane is 1.2. So what do we mean when we say a MAC of 1.2? So this means, this simply means that when the partial pressure of isoflurane uh, reaches 1.2% of the atmospheric pressure, which is taken to be around 760 millimeters of mercury. So when the uh, partial pressure of isoflurane reaches 1.2% of 760 millimeters of mercury in the alveoli, then we say that one mac of isoflurane has been achieved. Now the reason that these uh, MACs are expressed as percentages of partial pressure is because it is the partial pressure difference in uh, of the volatile agent in the alveoli, blood and brain that determines the clinical effect of volatile agent and not their concentrations. So partial pressure determines the clinical effect rather than the concentration. The concentration does not determine the clinical effect. So 1.2% of 760 is around 9.12 millimeters of mercury. So that means that when the partial pressure of isoflurane within the alveoli and subsequently within the brain, which is the site of action of the volatile agent, when the partial pressure in these two organs reaches 9.12 millimeters of mercury, then the clinical effect will be seen, right? Now the vaporizers that are commonly used in clinical practice, they uh, actually can be variable bypass vaporizers and there is also the tech 6 vaporizer now the vaporizer uh, the variable bypass vaporizers um, are used to deliver halothane isoflurane and sevoflurane now desflurane because of its very very high saturated vapor pressure and very low boiling point, it cannot be used in a traditional variable bypass vaporizer. Therefore, it needs a specialized vaporizer all of, uh, of its own. And one of the examples of a specialized desflurane vaporizer is a Tech 6 vaporizer. Now, in case of variable bypass vaporizers, the key concept that you need to keep in mind is that they are going to deliver a constant partial pressure output regardless of the altitude. Let us again take the example of isoflurane. So a variable bypass vaporizer for isoflurane that has been calibrated to give 1.2% concentration at sea level, that means 760 millimeters of mercury, it is going to deliver a partial pressure output of 9.12 millimeters of mercury as we have seen above, right? 1.2% of 760 is 9.12 millimeters of mercury. So at sea level, this is the vapor output for isoflurane. But I just mentioned that the variable bypass vaporizers deliver a constant partial pressure output. Now again, if you uh, refer to this equation, for the partial pressure to remain constant, if we decrease the total atmospheric pressure, then the concentration of the volatile agent has to increase. Therefore, at high altitudes, let us assume hypothetically, we, uh, we are, have gone to a place where the atmospheric pressure is half of the atmospheric pressure at the sea level. So around 380 millimeters of mercury. So at 380 millimeters of mercury, the va uh, vapor partial pressure output of a variable bypass vaporizer will still be 9.12 millimeters of mercury at a dial setting, which ensured um, a concentration of 1.2% at sea level. So when we were at sea level, let us assume we opened isoflurane at a dial setting of 1.2. So a dial setting of 1.2 at sea level, this is very important, at sea level, a dial setting of 1.2 is going to ensure 1.2% concentration and a partial pressure output of 9.12 millimeters of mercury, which is going to produce the clinical effect. Now we have traveled 
up a mountain where the atmospheric pressure is half that uh, the pressure that is present at the sea level so around 380 millimeters of mercury therefore in order to have the same partial pressure output the concentration has to now increase to 2.4 percent but we have not changed the dial setting the dial setting is still 1.2 therefore the same dial setting that ensured 1.2 percent concentration at sea level is now going to produce 2.4 percent concentration at higher altitude so that the vapor output partial pressure output can remain equal to 9.12 millimeters of mercury and therefore you can have the same clinical effect so this is very very important Therefore, when using a variable bypass vaporizer, there is no need to adjust the dial setting. A dial that is set at 1.2% right, will deliver the same partial pressure regardless of the altitude, even if the inspired concentrations of the volatile agent may change. Uh, but what about Tex-6 vaporizer? So Tex-6 DES vaporizer, it actually is not a variable uh, bypass vaporizer. More accurately, the Tex-6 vaporizer is described as a gas vapor blender it has two separate uh, circuits that run parallel to one another and are connected by pneumatic and electronic components one so par uh, one of the circuit uh, houses the fresh gas the other houses the desferrin vapors and the desferrin side of the circuit has a sump assembly now this sump assembly is actually heated to 39 degrees celsius in order to completely boil the desflurin because desflurin has a saturated vapor pressure of around 669 millimeters of mercury at 20 degrees celsius therefore its boiling point is just 22 degrees celsius therefore it can even boil at room temperature or in temperatures that are routinely encountered in the operation theater it can very well boil so that is why it cannot be used in a traditional variable bypass vaporizer so it has to be housed in a tech 6 vaporizer within the sump assembly which is heated to 39 degrees celsius completely vaporizing desflurin such that the vapor pressure inside the sump assembly is around 1500 millimeters of mercury or around 2 atmosphere right the key point about tech 6 vaporizer which is different from variable bypass vaporizer is that it is going to ensure delivery of a constant concentration rather than partial pressure so again if we refer to the same equation if the concentration remains the same then as the partial pr uh, total uh, atmospheric pressure falls this will lead to a fall in the partial pressure and this Again, obviously, if we go to a higher altitude, the concentration, if we do not change the dial settings, the concentration that is delivered will be the same. And with decreasing atmospheric uh, ambient barometric pressure, the partial pressure of desflurane uh, will fall. And this may result in um, underdosing uh, of um, desflurane and a risk of awareness at higher altitudes while using desflurane. Therefore, the concentration dial has to be increased at higher altitudes to compensate for the fall in partial pressure output. So I hope I was able to clear some doubts regarding how does change in altitude and change in ambient barometric pressure result in changes in vapor output for the traditional variable bypass vaporizers and the specialized Tex-6 vaporizers for desflurane. Thank you.